Hey, Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I am back again with another exciting Battleytics review. Uh, this one requested by one of our elite patrons, uh, so I couldn't say no. This is the Grizzly. Uh, such a cool mech, and it got a, a beautiful new sculpt. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Uh, this one was one of my favorites from back in the day of Mech Warrior 2 Ghost Bears Legacy. Who remembers that that gem? Uh, every now and then, I still watch the uh, the old intro on YouTube. Uh, Jack Bass, Jack Bass. That was such a great. If you have not seen that, if you're like if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go on YouTube right now and watch that. Uh, actually, watch it after you're done watching this video, or pause this one. Just either way, come back. All right. I know it's cool, but so anyway, Grizzly. Let's talk about Grizzly. Seventy ton. Second line clan mech. Uh, if you think all of the second line clan mechs are better than the Omni mechs, leave it in the comments. I'm going to tell you I do. Uh, I, th I think they're all better priced. I think they got better loadouts. I don't know. I think I insulted some people just now, uh, but I'm, I'm putting my line in the sand. I, I think if there was a war between the uh, you know the the first line units and the second line units, I think the second line units would actually win. I think they had better mechs. Um, I'll tell you why. It's because they have standard fusion engines. Just give me Kingfishers and Grizzlies all day and I'll be happy. Uh, so let's talk about the price tag on this thing. 2219 battle value. It's still hefty for a 70 ton mech. It was produced in 2947, uh, but stays in service all the way through into the Ill Clan era. Uh, movement profile of 46, jumps four, so very similar to that penetrator we just looked at not that long ago. And then from a dissipation perspective, uh, it's got 11 double heat sinks, uh, so all the good stuff. It's got an endo seal structure. Everything else is standard, uh, standard engine, standard armor, so on and so forth. Um, and it does have 13 tons of armor for 95.9% .9 coverage, uh, which is phenomenal. So moving on here to uh, the Grizzlies weapons loadout. It's got all the good stuff. Clan large pulse laser, arguably the best weapon in the game. Clan Gauss, Clan Medium Pulse, which is significantly better than the Inner Sphere Medium Pulse. Clan Small, small Pulse, and then an LRM-10 to round that thing out. Uh, the LRM has 12 shots. The Gauss has 16 shots, so more than enough uh, for your garden variety game of Classic. Um, I think, you know, anything anything running more than, you know, than, than 15 turns or whatever is probably a slog. So this thing should, should do pretty well in that regard. Um... And then if you look at the armor, the distribution's phenomenal. I mean, arms are armored, side torsos are covered up. Um, CT is a little bit uh, under max, but again, you know, we're talking 95% coverage here. This is this is really solid. So excited to look at this one. Uh, curious what the numbers will say. Guys, stay tuned. Grizzly Battleytics is coming right up. <laughs> All right, here it is. Offensive benchmark. Uh, what's the first thing you notice? I'll tell you the first thing I notice. It can't, it can't build up any heat. It's bizarre. So the only way you can really build up heat is if you're firing everything and jumping, um, which is interesting. Uh, otherwise, you can, you know, you can, you can jog around and you're, you're doing just fine. So in terms of how the heat, I'm sorry, how the damage works out here. It's astronomically high, 301.6 points of damage over 12 turns. That's like, it's very, very high. Uh, so if you look at, you know, inner sphere assault, Maxising blows the door off those. Um, so it does justify so far that 2219 BV price tag. If we look at the lethality side of things, the majority of the kills are, you know, CT kills. So it's just coring the thing out 83% of the time. It does have a decent amount of head kills, though, 14.5%. That is above that typical average that we see, which is around 10 to 12%. Um, that, that's very high because it does have, again, some big damage weapons, namely the head cap or the gauss, uh, which is terrific. And it can engage with that thing basically at, as soon as you're on the battlefield due to the, you know, the great range. 
Um, and so, you know, you have a lot of opportunities uh, to roll those uh, those double sixes on the location. Damage per hit, 6.3. Um, I'm sorry, let's say 8.3. Um, critical hits, 3.18, which is pretty standard. Damage per hit's a little bit above average. Again, that mighty Gauss rifle uh, pulling that up. And then time to kill is extremely low. Six turns is all that it took, uh, 6.09 on average, to take out a single 30-ton javelin. That's pretty, that's pretty nasty. Um, so overall, <laughs> overall, this thing is a beast. Uh, it can lay down a ton of damage, can kill things pretty quickly. Let's see how it does on the survivability side. It does have that volatile Gauss rifle, although it's all the way in the arm. And it does have LRM ammo, but it's cased and there's no XL engine. So I don't think that's going to be a huge threat. Let's see. All right, so here it is. Let's, let's look at the survivability first. 90.5%. I mean, that's extremely good. If I'm being honest, I was expecting it to be a little bit higher. Um, but let's take a look here um, at the, the mobility analysis first. So mobility analysis looking pretty good. Um, it's very similar, um, in fact, if not identical to that penetrator, which is interesting. Um, maybe not interesting because they both have jump jets in the legs. So as I had said in the last one, right, you've got a 33% chance to hit the jump jets versus something more valuable like an upper uh, hip, you know, upper lower foot actuator. Um, so I'd rather have a jump jet get knocked out, you know, not, at the, not to sound redundant, I'd rather, rather lose that. Um, then, then, you know, have a hip frozen and, and be it, you know, half movement or whatever for the rest of the game. Armor distribution is phenomenal. The legs are very highly armored. So it's unlikely that this thing is going to get crippled outside of a freak shot where, you know, you roll the crit, you roll a 12 and rip the leg off. This thing is going to be very hard to slow down. Now, in terms of the survivability, um, what we're looking at here primarily is, you know, we, we've got 9.5% of the time this thing is dying. Out of that, you know, about 7.3 and change is CT head deaths, um, and about 2.1 and change is engine deaths. And those engine deaths really don't come on until much later in the turns, right? And those could be scenarios where, for example, the left torso, uh, the ammo is detonated, it rips off the torso, and then you start basically pumping damage into that CT, you know, crits, so on and so forth. Um, so that's pretty much how that is is shaking out. But largely, the way to kill this thing uh, is just eating through its center torso armor. You know, maybe you get lucky and hit that LRM ammo. If you're playing this mech and, you know, you do have some significant damage um, in that left torso area, right, or maybe they're about to breach, might not be a bad idea to consider just dumping that ammo. You know, use it up as furiously as you can. Um, the, the ammo deaths really are not coming from um, that Gauss rifle all the way in the right arm. You're going to lose the arm, but that's, you know, maybe you lose the arm, but that's about it. So let's talk about efficiency. All right. So the first thing, first thing to talk about here is the extremely high efficiency, 9.42 um, byproduct of extremely high damage output um, and the fact that it survives 90% of the time. So if you look at the, um, the effectiveness there, the dark purple being the effective ACD, the blue being the optimized ACD, which in this case is the same as the baseline because there's, there's really no ability to build up heat and, and sort of um, cash that in for more damage. There's only separation, you know, towards the very like tail end of this 12 turn simulation. Um, and that's when the mech starts to die, right? So the majority of the game, this thing is just walking around. It's another one of those like zombie-esque mechs where it can just take a ton of fire and still deliver damage, which is fantastic. The other thing I want to call out is extremely low gunnery sensitivity, 0.279, um, that large pulse laser, the clan medium pulse laser. These things are such devastating weapons with tremendous range. And then on top of that, you get that, uh, you get that minus two. Um, bonus to your gunnery, which is which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and even at point blank ranges, that small pulse, um, maybe not even point blank, but short range, that small, that clan small pulse can actually reach out pretty far. So if you look at the, um, the, the, the sort of the curve, right, the skill curve there, the gunnery sensitivity, 
it goes up, like the efficiency climbs pretty quickly to 9.42. Um, and then you're barely getting any return on investment at Gunnery 1 or Gunnery 0. I know most people don't tend to play at those levels, especially with a second line mech, God forbid. Uh, but I think what the math says is a Gunnery 3, Gunnery 2 pilot is going to get you really good return on investment. But even a Gunnery 4 pilot, I think, would do just fine in this mech because of the pulse lasers. But if it were me, I want to engage with that Gauss rifle at range. I want to land those 15-point chunks early, um, and the mech is already 2,200 points. You might as well put somebody um, worth a darn in the cockpit of this particular design. Um, so, you know, effective damage by gunnery, that sort of bar chart at the bottom there. Gunnery 2, you're doing 292.49 um, damage. That's effective, so that's factoring in the 90% loss uh, from death. Um, or actually it's a 3% loss, but I'm um, factoring in that 90% survivability, I should say. Um, at Gunnery 3, you're at 239. So it's about a 60-point swing um, to go from Gunnery 3 to Gunnery 2. Um, and then you can see you know, where the rest of it sort of shakes out. Okay, let's talk about roles, um, threat, and how we would use the mighty Grizzly on the battlefield. All right, so here it is. My three picks for the Grizzly, Brawler. Vanguard Defender. Uh, this thing is nasty all over the all over the field. Um, I think the closer you get, the more devastating it gets. You know, if you're playing against a grizzly, just you know maybe stay farther away from it. I mean, but it, you know, it's got the LRM, it's got the Gauss, it's got the Clan Large Pulse. You're 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 kind of in trouble no matter where you are on the battlefield here. Um, but this thing is is pretty rough. So it does a forty five point alpha strike at six inches. So I want to kind of get close. I want to take advantage of that medium pulse laser specifically in tandem with the large and the gauss, right? You don't want to get too close. Uh, but, you know, I think I think uh, that, you know, that short six inch range is really like, you know, six to four, like that's the sweet spot, hexes, inches, whatever you want to play. I also said a defender role here um, in addition to brawler and vanguard. Um, and, and I think it can be a, a very good defender because we just talked about the ability of the Grizzly to reach out and touch your opponent. But if they do decide to close on an objective, um, this thing isn't going to roll over, uh, you know, like an LRM boat or something like that. I mean, this thing is, is nasty uh, to, to deal with at any range. So I think it could be very good to just plop on an objective um, or something along those lines. Um, even I'm thinking about like an urban scenario with the jump jets, this thing can be very, very, very effective. Um, so, you know, all things considered, very, very happy with the Grizzly. Obviously, the efficiency rating, 9.42, speaks volumes um, to how good this mech is. And just imagine how different it would be if it were an Omni mech with an XL engine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love the Timberwolf. Who doesn't? Um, so anyway, jokes aside, the, the Grizzly is a, is a tremendous mech. I'm curious what you think. I absolutely can't wait to get my hands on the new sculpt. Uh, I'm going to paint it up. I'm not sure which which faction I should do. Maybe I'll do a whole new clan. Uh, tell me what you think. What should I do with the Grizzly? Uh, I'm probably going to get a couple of them, so let me know. And let me know if you have any Grizzlies painted up uh, and what faction they are and if you like them and what's your favorite Grizzly variant. I believe there's three. There's the standard, the two, and the three that are out there. I think that the third one might have recently come out in like recognition guide 30, if my memory serves me right. But regardless, that's the Grizzly. Like I said, let me know what you think about it. Um, speaking of letting me know things, let me know you're watching by clicking the subscribe button. 45% uh, of our viewers actually have not subscribed. That's a significant amount when we have 10,000 uh, or, or so subscribers. I believe we're 10,700 or something by now. So 45%, that's thousands of people are watching and not subscribe. Make me happy. Click the subscribe button. Uh, leave a like. Click the little bell so you know when all of our great content comes out. Uh, and also, if you're getting the hankering to buy something cool and you can't wait for the new Kickstarter and you want a Grizzly, uh, go over to Aries Games and Minis. He's got all the great stuff. He's got the new force packs. He's got the books. He's got the dice. He's got the terrain. Uh, anything you need to get your Battletech's fix, uh, you can get it over at Aries Games and Minis. So definitely check that out. Uh, but that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.